side note, LeFou was always gay. <laughs> Get over yourselves. Uh, Brunch! Hit it, boys! <laughs> batter up <laughs> you are all in on baseball right now that's I what i it. say at my new restaurant brave dave's diner every time somebody you order something i don't say order up i say batter up yeah because the the only thing that you serve is pancakes pancake batter oh crushed yeah, it. Not bad. a lot of things have batter though <laughs> uh yeah but pancake batter is the most famous batter i i would say that uh, cake batter one but pancake no. falls into... You think pancake batter is more... Yes. All right. Now we're, we we're abandoning the entire episode yeah. and debating the merits we're of pancake batter and cake batter. We're going to edit this into like a very serious social clip where <laughs> it's like, uh, what's the most... I'm distracted, by the way, of how many social clips now mock the financial bros thing. I saw like two of them a month ago and I was so excited. I was sending you them and everything. And now already I'm like, too much unfollowing all the accounts it, i saw like hit now a saturation everyone's doing point, that yeah. and people are commenting on those videos being like this place did it first blah blah uh everybody credits everything to friday beers which i didn't know about until like a week ago yeah well i mean i still don't know anything about friday beers i just know that it's like a very popular uh social experiment <laughs> social experiment <laughs> yes. um no i i don't know anything about them but i know that like they're they're in like the same vein as barstool where like everybody thinks that they invented everything <laughs> Ah, that Barstool did invent everything. Yeah, Barstool invented the internet, dog. That's true. Do they say that? Yes. Oh, I was gonna say like I, nobody That's, I know, nobody I know from Barstool is like territorial. No, about that, I anything mean, like uh, that. Dave is. I'm assuming Dave yeah, is yeah. like that. But I think I don't know Dave, Dave. Dave does like the we invented the internet thing, which has always bothered me because like yeah. everything that they've done has always been like a spin off of something that any, somebody else has done first for the most part. Okay, but like they do it really well. So F Feidelberg said something great the other day, which is like, I am here to fill time between advertisements, <laughs> like that. I thought was a very apt way of describing what podcasting can be. But sometimes you and me, we'll just grind it out. We'll yeah. skip the ad. Famously, and then we'll get we an just, email yeah. that'll say, like, you guys forgot, like, you, you know how big a moment this is? Like, you guys, we, we want to advertise to you. And we were like, cool, we wanted to talk about that show Love on Netflix from like six years ago again. So I mean, sorry. if there's anything that you can say about us is that we don't do it for the money. We're not in this for the money, famously, because we've been in the red for, for a while. Uh, and two, when we do get the opportunity to make some money, we usually say, no, thank you. Yeah, I thought about it the other day. This is a very dark feeling I had. For for a brief second, I wished there were another one of me. <laughs> I wish there was like one more DJ <laughs> that I could like work with and like give some. And I, I am famously unemployed. I could work, I could like give some of my workload to. You want to just clone yourself for pro productivity? For a gross, disgusting second, I famously over the years, not to get dark, but uh, as a much younger person, had a history of wishing uh, there was there only zero, zero of yeah. me. So for a brief second, being like, man, if only there were another person with my exact personal growth. brain. I don't know if that's growth in the right direction. I think that stasis is probably the better play there. I think I think your uh, your motivations for it are are honorable. Like to to say that you want one of you so that like you can lessen the load for yeah. the one that does exist. Yeah, is is I think a a fine reason to want to clone yourself. Like I would love to have a one of me. And I'm going to use my television terms, so I'm not saying it in a braggy way. I would love. Uh, a to have a talent DJ and a pro one a for production. a production DJ. It's fair. That would be great. Although that would be a, a good concept for like a like a TV show or like a well, I guess that does exist with the uh, the Paul Rudd TV show that never went anywhere. Where he like I mean it duplicated went himself somewhere big where Tom Brady made fun of Robert Kraft and then Brady was like all oh, the blame and shame media. And yeah, then, that, was, that was lame. And then, like, Tommy Curran, whom I love, was like, oh, like, we were wrong. We misread it and everything. And I was like, don't do that, man. We didn't misread it. No, we did he not. He made a joke. 
that or, 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 like, or like maybe he didn't get it. Maybe he signed up for the script and they like, were, and, yeah, and they were like they, well, they were making fun were... of him and he didn't get it and he was like, "Oh, wait, I didn't sign up for this." You still did it though. But uh, it's probably the show probably doesn't do great if like local sports networks are the only people that watch and discuss <laughs> yeah. it. But, it wasn't very good. Um, but I, I mean, like, I would be interested to see the drastic differences between talent DJ and production DJ. I if don't, that's the only world that they lived in. I don't know. I, I think that obviously, I would like production DJ better, but I would also that would also probably be just because I'd not like talent DJ. I'd be like, so all you do is just come and podcast you're and just a suit all you do is just like lay down these tracks and then production dj has to mix them uh i even got some of that i was uh th- th- there there might be and don't get excited about it. if you're the type to get excited about this i caution don't get too excited about it but there might be some new music on the way and as i was uh doing some of the uh post-production stuff for the first time i was like this sucks. Not like this song sucks, which maybe the song does suck, but I was like, man, I'm like pretty burnt out. For, like, I wish that I could have just laid this down and handed it off, gotten on my jet and gone <laughs> back to wherever I live. But shit, man, would you want another Pete? Um, I don't know. You if two I would... could do some gnarly trench coat stuff. Look like a real fella. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, we could get into R-rated movies and shit. <laughs> That'd be pretty sick. Um, no, I don't think so. I think I'm in like the same boat as you. Where like most of the time, I wish there was if, ha- if you're like, at less one, of me. A, yeah. No, no, you you want to be at one. Yeah, right. Like, but you know, there have been times where you're like, ah, oh, I could do without. I think without wanting, the one wanting two is obviously less alarming than wanting zero, but it's not. It's still not a good thing. I would more want it for like I'd like to be in two places at once. Ah, like you know, scheduling. Yeah, right. Like the when the Harry Potter, there was like one of the Harry Potter movies where uh, Hermione had like this thing that allowed her, her to manipulate time, and she was able to go to like different classes that had scheduling conflicts. Harry Potter in the Way of Water. Yes, correct. Um, like I would, I would do that. Like that would be that'd be cool. Like to have more hours in the day, essentially. That's why, like, I would do, like, workout Pete and, like, video game Pete. Oh. Like, that would be cool. And then, like, I could just pick which body I wanted to go out in. (laughs) Oh, so that's the thing, man. If you have two of you, I didn't even think about how they would do physically. Talent Deej would, I mean. Like, do you exist in both of them? Is like, are you the qu- same like, one? Like, like if do, you do, eat- you have a central brain that you can like transfer into, or do they like exist as separate entities? Right? Is it like is it mirrored? Your right? They would yeah, say like, in like the hard drive. World. Right, like where you can use your cursor and move it to each monitor. I think it would have to be different ones because while production Deej is doing his production, yeah, thing, because you can't share one brain because then you're you're. You're you're focusing on several things at once again. Like one of these DJs has to go out for like tacos at some point. <laughs> so I think that w- the other one can go out and do stuff while the other one is uh, hard at work. But what sucks is, and this is where man production DJ or actual producers, people who like do stuff, don't get enough credit. Even for the stuff where talent DJ is doing his work. The production Deej still has to be there for like the recording of it or the making of it or whatever. And then fucking Not talent Deej fucks off and then production Deej's work really begins. Yeah, um, I don't know. Like it dep- yeah, like you could press a record button for fucking podcasting and then hand it off to production Deej and be like, if edit. I, that's if I trust talent Deej. That's true. And as Which we found as but as we found out. Not even talent and production Deej is exempt from forgetting yeah. to press record every once in a while. Yeah, I don't know. No, I, I, I would. Trust. I do think. I do think that you have to exist as separate entities for the sake of the conversation, though. Mm. It just makes the most sense. Like it doesn't make sense to sh- have a shared, uh, like a shared processing unit. I was speaking of 
on uh, Bill Simmons' podcast, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon appeared and they talked about uh, a number of things, one of which was the shared bank account that they had mm-hmm. and that Affleck had a house and if like one of them got them a movie, then they take care of the bills and it was just like a house with Casey Affleck and Matt Damon and everything and like the money situation was just very fluid and up in the air and everything until Matt got the born movies. Yes, exactly. They were like when Matt got the born movies, they had a time. <laughs> yeah, but like, you and I, sh- I mean, we we do share a bank account that is a much smaller stakes endeavor. I think more you and I share like an emotional bank account where like, your burden is my burden. My burden is your burden. And I was thinking about that the other day. And like, uh, this is like a weird, I was th- talking to my therapist about uh, like how I'm having a lot of good days these days. And the last time I had a lot of good days was about, was like not too long after your mom died because I was like artificially having good days where I was like, this is like the one time where I can't suck because like if, somebody's if, counting on me. If like another thing sucks for Pete right now, then there's going to be zero of them. So like uh, then, then I, then that I was, brought up, that's very accurate though too. <laughs> no, then I brought up the Matt Damon, but I was like, did you listen to the, that, that I had sent her? I was like, did you listen oh to the, uh, because you're, you're on the sending your therapist stuff. Big time. Level? Damn. Yeah. I was like, did you listen to the Affleck and Damon? Thing Do you guys on? text outside of like office hours? no, I wish. I know that That some people do that. Yeah, I know. Like, I know some people that text like their therapist. Like, not like frequently, Mm. but like every like. There's like a check in policy, like where they can they're allowed to check in. They're allowed to be like, "Hey, check this out." Oh, so I like I so I emailed her that. Oh, okay. Um, that's fine. But yeah, I was like, we. I was like, Pete and I share an emotional bank account where there's been times where I've been like useless to myself and then therefore useless to everybody. But that like really like Pete's too, Pete's too invested. Like he gets affected by that shit. So I don't know. It's you, you, you and me, Ben and and Matt, not too different. (laughs) Yeah. No, I mean, we've talked about it a lot in the past where like we have these, like we have like this, what do you call it? Like a inverse relationship where like, I don't know. Uh, we always find a way to level each other out. Yeah, that's and like, good. and it's gone, and it's gone in both directions. Where I've been very high, yeah, and you've been low, and it's kind of we've met in the middle, and then like the opposite in uh, recent years has been true. Yeah, and it's kind of being, which is nice. And like, like you not having a job, I don't know if we talked about this. Like, has definitely made it me feel like this isn't my first time being just kind of like. Not really doing anything, and I'll I am doing out. stuff. You're and everything. doing a lot of stuff, but like I've se- like I- I've I've seen you not have a job and like live and not have it uh, affect your live, emotional thrive. state too much. Yeah, um, Ben, we tried to get Ben Affleck and Matt Damon for this uh, episode, and uh, didn't happen. I believe, to my knowledge, right now, but uh, we pushed really hard for it and jumped through. The proper hoops. We didn't uh, get a no. Didn't get a no. Like got. We're sincerely taken seriously uh, due to a, uh, a a friend who is helpful with a lot of stuff. So uh, we would have loved to have those guys. Although as it got closer and closer and closer, it became like a, we might find out with very short notice thing. And that's when I did not want to get a Ben Affleck and Matt Damon interview because I if I. If if I had to like rush and then suddenly get thrown into this thing where we're interviewing Affleck and Damon, no thank you. I, I want to be not sweating for that. I would have I would have agreed with that if I hadn't listened to the Simmons podcast because listen to the Simmons podcast, it was very good and it made me like it made me nervous because it like ramped up the pressure of getting them because I was like, oh damn, I want to do one better than that, yeah. and it's going to be really hard because they know Simmons, They're all they friends. trust Simmons, yeah. they hang out with Simmons. But where I did, where I w- where I would have pulled confidence from is like listening to that and just like seeing how mu- how little Simmons interacted with them. He would say like something, and then they would talk for the next 
20 minutes. Yeah. And they would talk to each other. And most of it was Affleck. He talked a lot. Um, but like they were very conversational and they just kind of like took the wheel. Their friendship is very sincerely on display. And I don't think yes. that's acting like Affleck has it he feels feel like, extremely authentic yes and he'll keep referring to like damon as his best friend and everything and you're like you guys probably aren't best friends anymore like that was a long time ago and you dif- did different things and you each found ways to establish yourselves independently so probably not but, but they talk so much about like their relationship even when they weren't working together mm-hmm. and like they wouldn't they, like sometimes they wouldn't speak to each other, but like they could pick right up where where they left off. And like Damon was talking about how angry it made him that like people were turning Affleck into a punching bag yes. and like comparing the two. And like that's that's to me is like that's very indicative of a real of a real friendship. I like the thing where they discussed that they are not icons <laughs> that like it's so so dumb that like and affleck i mean your heart breaks for like his thing talking about uh <laughs> talking about every everybody and he brought up himself like people say like oh it's so funny like affleck is sad in every picture people take of him and he's like it's because i'm like living life and doing my thing and then like i'm with my kids and then i see a, a camera fucking weirdo and like me. legitimately like the only emotion that i have in that moment like isn't anger it isn't re- like not gonna be the guy that like punches the camera guy or whatever like just like really sad and then there's a picture and it's like ben affleck sad and i'm like <laughs> fuck man he and i i said this i, I tweeted this after i listened to it affleck is so relatable yeah, and he and he's like he's like the reason why I look so annoyed and sad is because like I'm like why are you taking a picture of me? I'm not that interesting. Yeah. I'm carrying coffee and I'm wearing like a t-shirt. Yeah. What do you care? <laughs> and I I love that uh Damon was saying that he would explain that to Affleck where everybody would be there for Jennifer Garner and there were all these cameras and everything and he's like no, like Jennifer Garner is wonderful and like jennifer lopez is like an icon we are not those things so when they're there for us it's confusing but most of the time like it's inappropriate for us who cares about what what we do It, it broke my heart a little bit that like that uh you could tell like affleck's biggest regret seems to be that like he became a much bigger star than he wanted to be that's always seemed the case though yeah but like in he's got a, some jay baruchel to him where like he probably just like really wanted to make movies yeah and but like i think like the way and like obviously you can say that like he stepped in his his own way in this in several different ways but like the thing with like Jennifer Garner and Jennifer Lopez, which is like what matt damon kind of attributed to him being taken to another level was because like two stars yeah. in a partnership and like living are way more interesting than like Matt Damon being in love with a normal person. Yeah. And you could like kind of tell the envy that Ben Affleck had in his voice talking about like Matt Damon's relationship and his personal life versus Ben Affleck. And like, he can't go down the street and get a coffee without getting his picture taken. Whereas like they lived in the same neighborhood and Matt Damon was like, I would go like, ride my bike around yeah. every day and nobody would ever take a picture of me and I'd come back to my house and the, the, every, the paparazzi would be lined up outside of Ben's house. I love those two so much. We have an air review shot in the can. It's going to drop Monday. Uh, we made promises to not release it until the week the movie came out, so we're going to release it as soon as possible, which will be Monday on The Brunch YouTube, youtube.com slash at listen to brunch, and please get on that Patreon, patreon.com slash listen to brunch. We're currently in our, resetting would be the wrong term, but like recooking up the next batch of stuff, Your Honor has ended, we've got a lot of stuff coming, stay on the YouTube, stay on the Patreon it's all lovely there. Uh, we've now had, I'm very, very happy about this. You texted me the other day. You said, let's do 
it's Monday or people are pissed. Let's do a Sunday scaries thing with it's Monday and people are pissed. If you don't know what it's Monday and people are pissed star is, it's a thing that we used to do forever ago where we would, uh, we used to have Monday episodes and we would start them by saying it's Monday and people are pissed. And Pete would say, why are people pissed? And it would be some ridiculous story. This was early on in, uh, like maybe cancel culture or people complaining about everything with identity politics. So an right. example would be uh, people are pissed because in the new Disney uh, Beauty Little and the Mermaid Beast, or... they made uh, LeFou a gay character. What a ridiculous thing to be pissed about. And then we would talk about that. Yeah. Uh, side note, LeFou was always gay. Get over <laughs> yourselves. Um, now, that's a thing that like had to stop happening because now it would just like bum us out. Yes. And like we would just legitimately get angry every time. We talking were talking about- before. So we loved the name. We just loved It's Monday and People Are Pissed as just an entity, but we didn't really know what it was. And it just lay dormant. And we have mugs and merch that say It's Monday and People Are Pissed. And a blog one time was like, hey, uh, you guys aren't really doing anything with it right now. Could we do something with it's Monday and people are pissed? And I said, no, because I love it, but we just haven't really done anything with it. And one of the ideas I was telling you before the show, I don't even know if you remember, uh, I wanted to do a Monday news show that was like a crudely done news show uh, called it's Monday and people are pissed. And it was a, it would be a feel bad news show. And this was way before the pandemic this would not have worked, or, it, no. or people would have been sick of it by the there time that came there, around. There would have been no appetite for it during the pandemic. Like, we talk about how Ted Lasso thrived because it came out during the pandemic. Everybody's like, finally, something that doesn't make me feel fucking awful. And that's why John Krasinski's uh, yeah. show, like, uh, Some Good News, yeah. I think it's called. Like, it was just being positive, like, uh, highlighting some positivity in the world. So by the time the t- pandemic rolled around, people would have been like, fuck you guys, Fuck your stupid negative show. Not to mention every news show that exists is based on negativity. So that's anyway. the joke. It's like, but it's market. We would market it as like the world. This is the <laughs> this is the news show that's negative. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. I'll I'll have to buckle up for that one. Yeah. Wow. It is funny though because I looked at my phone and I had it from I forget what year, but it was like legitimately. The exact opposite of this. Like, if we had just thought to do the opposite of it. <laughs> Which like, applies to a lot of things that we've so like done we, but in our like, life. We got the joke that a feel bad, like, feel bad is like a play on feel good. Right. And it's mug, it's just did the opposite. I don't know, maybe the studio is a little nicer or something like that. But its current existence, it has new life now, thanks to, to Pete, uh, who had the great idea to copy will (laughs) defreeze which buddy not a bad idea because everybody else does it right now yeah i feel bad i want to get him on the horn it's such a simple thing like just overlaying text over relevant photos and it's the same thing on every photo yeah and it well it's not the same thing on every photo for sunday scaries right they have different days different days right and uh like will is incredible at it and a pioneer and he's some got might that say. filter he's also got the elongated times new roman he's yeah. just curated he, a great aesthetic. i mean if, if there's anything that i can say about will and i can say a lot of great things about will but like maybe the number one thing that i could say about will is what he's got an eye he's got an eye he i i, I would say more than he's got an eye he, he's got a w and two l's <laughs> shut the fuck up <laughs> he, he has uh, he he is an excellent curator. Yeah, an he curates. excellent curator. I would trust, like I would trust, I would give Will the keys to my house, and I would say, "Do what you want with it." And I would be so excited to come back to my house and be like, "I'm going to be, I'm going to come off as a tastemaker." I put more effort into my setup for watching Succession the other night than I have into like any sort of company in the longest time and it was like the lights were dim like a a nice like big candle in the middle of the room i've been big no phone and so i would love uh will is a big candle guy he's obviously got the sunday scaries candles and he i think will drop some coin on candles i was thinking i wouldn't hate venmaring him like a couple hundo bucks and being like 
hey, what does this get me? Send it to my house. It would probably be like one candle. Can you imagine how good that candle would be? I know. I, I honestly like. I want to do like a Will DeFreeze subscription service where I just send him like Great idea. where I just send him like five hundred dollars a month and be like, just buy me cool shit, dude. We should do a subscription. We should do a group where we do a subscription service where we each put in five hundred dollars and we each w- one of us is in charge of everything oh, man, and we just curate here. shit for ourselves. Yeah. Like I like. W- what do you think I'm having you curate for me? Uh, I mean, like, I don't think you get to pick. I think that, like... No, like, no, like, what is your... If this is an HG, HGTV show, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. what is your expert... Like, what are you the curator of? Um, I have an answer. I, I would say... I think I would say, like, sports merch. That's exactly it. Yeah. 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 Jerseys and such. Yeah. And, like, like hats. just, like, hats. Yeah, like, sports merch in general. I think, yeah, that would be... My area of expertise, you would be music, like vin- like send yeah. me a cool vinyl, two vinyls a month or something. What are some What are some things that if I have it in my collection, if I have it on the old display, people are gonna say, "Yeah, fuck." That makes me think like Washed should have like a yes, a, a, like a gift box. Dude, this is such a good idea. This is Either a the very coffee's hitting, or this is such a good idea. It's such a good idea that uh. like because there's something that that like everybody could in Washed could provide that's like specific to them. And it would be awesome for the brand. Do you know how often I, not too often, but every now and then I hit, I have a direct connect at Wash. I'm not going to say who it is. Who? So we have a big group text that's the best. Generally, it's like me and Pete kind of talking to each other on there, but it's the best. Brett will jump in. Randy will jump in. I'd say it's like more you will and dave really you think yeah that, oh i was gonna I, I would think that like brett's in there a lot too yeah uh brett's very supportive yeah brett's like a, a hype man randy's big in there too yeah i guess we're just explaining there's only there the only people that participate are and then listing every person in the group chat i will uh no every now and then i will hit my direct connect it washed with like Man, it would probably take too much money and would be too much work. But like, this is a thing that we could all do, and it's always a good idea. This is something. This actually, unfortunately, falls into that category. It's probably going to be tough to do. We would have to set up. So man, but realistically, how many people are going to sign up for it? It's not <laughs> like we're going to have to send out like a million packages. Yeah, I, I mean, you, I think you support. I think you underestimate the support that Wash gets in general. We'd probably we'd be doing at least one hundred a month, like a hundred subscriptions. Yeah, yeah, probably. And I, I think that like two of them would be because of us. Mm-hmm. But I think that we could win some people over. We'd earn people's business. Oh no, if we, no, no, if we did a curated brunch thing, I, I'll t- tell you what. Not even bragging. If if DJ, if we did like a DJ curated thing, I'm getting at least ten people. I could name you ten Bruntouchables yeah, right I now. That. Fucking I mean, music alone, I think that you would get a lot of people on board. Or j- just like general kind of stuff to check out. Uh, and I'm saying the same same thing about you. Like if if there was like a a hey, lot of people do like is, DM me about like, hey, where can I find this like merch thing? Like that I love what you're wearing. Like that just kind of shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we're on to something, something here. here. What Man, say? so well, what's everybody else doing? What's Will's doing like a candle? I don't, I don't even know if Will's just doing but candles, do man. S- like, yeah, like that's what I'm saying. He's like a master curator. I would trust him with like almost anything. Will's, I don't know, maybe one of us is CEO of it because like Will is like head of head of product. Yes, exactly. Will's head of product. Uh, what's D- Dylan sending? I don't know. I, I, that's a good question. What is Dylan sending? Mm-hmm. I don't want this to be like insulting to Dylan, but yeah. I just don't, I don't know. Oh, you know, we could get, it. maybe this would make it too big, but like we could cut Miles in on it. Get some action toys figure. in there. <laughs> Miles is killing it in the action figure game right now. He's yeah, got if like you a- don't follow Miles, it's a uh, Sir Collect a lot. And yeah. he is just like. He is getting hooked up with like celebrities on celebrities and doing like yeah. cool, c- cool ass commissions. And it's I feel awesome. like it used to be like once every now and then he would just reshare. I talked to Miles all the time and he wouldn't even tell. He'd just like reshare something from like 
whoever the biggest rapper is that yeah. day of something that of like them working with Miles. And I'm like, what? You like wouldn't tell us. Yeah, yeah. Now it happens all the time. He's incredible. I still to this day, uh, like I'd love if like we figure out a way to do wash stuff with him, but it blows my mind that Barstool hasn't hired him. Maybe they don't. Actually, no. A lot of the Barstool people know who he is because yeah, a lot he of Bar- sent them a ton yeah, of cool shit made, and they uh, love it. He made Dan something, and I think they've had him do some things or whatever. But I'm like, Yo. yeah, he, he paid him for like the Rico Bosco thing, right? And then Dave like made a video about one of his toys, being like, "This is the coolest fucking thing I've ever gotten." Yeah, I uh, I've only met Nardini once, and not Nardini anymore. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, Erica. But so I don't think I would have any pull if I were to DM her and be like, yo, just like follow this guy. Yeah. Just uh see see what's up. Because he's like he's perfect. He's a perfect person to be hanging around a creative setting. Right. Like, and, and just getting he would get just get pulled by like several people in that office. Yeah. Like, hey, I need this thing, I need this thing, I need this. It would honestly probably be like overwhelming for him because they'd so always be asking him. Before for shit. long though, I think that he and I don't know if he'd want to do this, but probably would, but he, it just like, wouldn't be toys with him all the time anymore. I think, I think that he, cause he has like a talent energy of like, yeah. he's like the, uh, uh, Donnie they have there. Yeah. The yeah, guy, yeah Donnie. Yeah. yeah. Donnie does. Same dude. Just like <laughs> travels, does cool shit. Is super weird, but says in like, like the best a wild ways possible. thing every now yeah. and then, but just ultimately comes off as a tremendous hang. Yeah. Love it. We're going to, work on this uh curated there's something thing. there there's something there and and yeah. uh, i i do love the idea of like a person to person subscription service yeah it's kind of kind of cool um one of the you want to talk about succession yeah i do uh what did you think of the uh the first episode i didn't end up watching it what i set up so nice and i was like yo this is sweet. I should have company over. That's not true because so you've I been called. No, I, just, <laughs> I was gonna say like, what are you talking about? You were tweeting out disgusting yeah, brothers. Memes. So biggest takeaway. <laughs> let's just get it out of the way first. I am quite surprised by the lack of disgusting brothers content I've seen. I've seen some disgusting brothers stuff. As soon as they said disgusting brothers on that show, I was like, planted or not, this is for memes. And all we will see from now until the end of the next day will be Disgusting Brothers stuff. And I didn't really see much. Yeah, me neither, uh, which was surprising. Uh, I, I also do think that it's it's very much in, in its infant stages. So maybe people did not want to uh, blow their load too quickly with Disgusting Brothers content. People don't want to blow their load with succession stuff. It's you sure point. about that? It's a fair point. Fair yeah. point. At least it was a little less heavy-handed than the season uh, three premiere. This is season four, right? Mm-hmm. Season three premiere when Kendall was in the limo and he was like asking people to read the tweets, yeah. and they were just like, "Bad tweet, bad tweet, yeah. bad." And I was like, "Come on, you're doing this specifically for Twitter, and it is the most like Succession egregious." Does that. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Uh, it it knows that it is extremely popular online for better and for worse. My other biggest takeaway from this episode is, and I know that comparing something to su- Succession isn't fair because Succession truly is a creme de la creme show. The excuse of this was a setup episode loses a lot of weight when this was a setup episode and i thought it was a fucking awesome episode of television yeah it definitely was yeah like like, typically we'll say like oh this episode of ted lasso for example uh we'll talk about in a little bit uh this was a, a setup to whatever so it's fine if it wasn't the best episode this was a setup episode that was great yeah it was it was very very good and i think that that's there's something to be said there too because premieres have incredibly high expectations and people want them to be awesome. And if you come out with a setup episode on a premiere, which I guess like almost every premiere is a setup episode in some way, it's setting up the rest of the season. But like this one didn't do anything brand new for mm-hmm. Succession, you know? Like it it kind of like played the hits and it sort of like nodded to that too it was like oh big deal like the kids are trying to overtake uh logan how Uh, how how fresh and new yeah Yeah. like uh for it not doing anything ambitious it was very good yeah logan 
great episode. A great episode for, obviously, Shiv and Tom. Uh, I... That is uh, going to be, I think, like the mwah, chef's kiss of the season. That relationship and it's and uh, where it's going. We're coming off another prestige television drama, Your Honor, that is chock full of showdowns. Mm-hmm. Succession has its showdowns, but they're typically between the same people, and it doesn't mix and match too too much. Getting Shiv and Tom showdowns will be great yes because i think that tom is the best character in the show i think i I think there's a very strong argument to be made there. like in terms of like human qualities and like depth to a character yeah tom has the most depth um and he's also pretty relatable in that like you ask yourself what would you be like if you were in that world and he is so clearly like a "Quote unquote loser." He's an he's an insecure fucking twat. But he's <laughs> yeah. in that world, and he's like, therefore, uh, I got to be like this. And like all the stuff with the bag, I thought was hilarious. Yes. But that is just Tom to a T. He's just yes. so he needs to assert that he's like Logan, mm-hmm. and he's like all these people, and he wouldn't be caught dead with a big bag. That was really funny. That was that was quite good. I thought the uh, the best moment of the episode came uh, when Roman said, "All right, we're getting on the plane. You can pop it back in your mouth now." Yeah, that was... <laughs> the the. I'm not always the biggest fan of like uh, dick humor. Yeah, but like him talking about his dad's latest conquest <laughs> that like I mean he is always clearly does that, though. for a power dynamic. Yeah, but it's like. It's the best when it's uh when it's like out outrageous. Yeah, I mean that's just that guy, man. He's got no filter. Uh, I went back and watched after. I was like, don't don't rewatch Succession from the beginning just because you're excited about Succession. You have other things to do. So instead, I went back and rewatched from season two, episode nine, which is the <laughs> deposition episode. Really, one of my favorite episodes, mainly because of uh. If I had to give Tom a grade, it would be a B plus for bad plus terrible. <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, really? I, I remember Greg. Gre- yeah, Greg and Tom. So t- Tom has the... Greg just comes off as a goof because yeah. he tries to speak uh, perfect the, English. Yeah, know, like I, I wish King's to only English, answer yes. in the affirmative. You can speak normally. Uh, yeah. So I shall. <laughs> um, no, Tom is Tom is the one who like really fucks up every. He's up there for ten minutes and really just fucking melts down the entire time. Okay. They ask. He's like, uh, they're like. Well, he was the most culpable one, right? Obviously. They're like, yeah. do you uh, remember? Do, uh, do you know a Greg? I forget what's Greg's last name. Uh, a Greg. A, Greg the Egg. Yeah, <laughs> Greg. Whatever. And he's like, uh, no, no, sir. You don't know Greg. <laughs> no. Uh, you emailed him 66 <laughs> times on this day. Oh, do I know him in I, I I do know him in the in the way that you meant. What other way could you know him? No, no, no. I know him in the way that you like. It's like <laughs> all really, really tough. This is, this is coming back. To and me as now. he's saying, like, uh, no, I don't know him. They cut to them all in the back, and Shiv's like, no, you don't know Craig. <laughs> Such a good show. Uh, this episode's really good. The, the stuff with the hundred, and I just always I like the Cherry Jones is still on the show. She rocks. Mm-hmm. Uh, very, very, very good first episode, I would say. And uh, congrats on saying the highest number you could think of. Yes, I hate to overuse this term, but that's just like a fucking iconic Logan moment. I mean, Logan is has like stayed so true to the character that he was meant to be. Like, has not faltered from that character. At all, and he's and it never gets old. Like he's still, he's still incredible. Even at and his he's still, birthday party, he never gets old. That's true. And he finds the like the most efficient ways to cut people down. Yeah, it's incredible. The disgusting brothers. I hope that we get more of that. And I liked that Shiv brought up that like it's going around that they call themselves the disgusting brothers. I uh, I did, I did. Like, like that I had to wonder whether Tom was fucking with Greg in terms of the CCTV. Oh, I 
right out of the gate, I figured he was fucking with him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I figured that he was fucking with him, but then I was also like, mm, wouldn't put it past Logan to also put CCTV in all of his house and watch it before he goes to bed. No, I mean, he. I think that goes so much against Logan's character. Logan so can't be bothered with things. He's not the most meticulous dude in the world. He wants control of everything, but I can't see him pouring That's through a fair shit. Point. He yeah. shoots from the hip a lot, which is where a lot of his kids get it from. Certainly where Kendall gets it from. And I also don't, I, I think you're right. He, I don't think that he would take the time to watch all the footage. He would just be like, tell me something. Tell, if you have something to tell me, tell me it. Yes, that's pretty much half yeah. of Logan's lines yeah. on the show. Cannot wait for the the rest of, of this season. I've kind of sat out a lot of the promo stuff and all like the media rounds everybody's making. I know that there's been a lot of Brian Cox stuff, either. him talking about smoking pot and him not liking the newfangled way of how actors can be and everything. And everybody being upset about i actually did want to bring this up they didn't tell them until the table read of the final episode that the show was done really that's fucking crazy and i think that they they kind of different actors have uh expressed in different have let on more than others about like yo i was pissed about that i think that yeah. like sarah snook was particularly like what I mean, yeah, I I, th I think that like you don't want to be told that like you're losing your job on the last day of your job. Yeah. And also like I, I think from a perspective that like you want to be able to savor those final the final moments of doing the show. And also you want to uh, be able to put plans in place yeah. after you're done getting the paycheck from HBO. Uh, Not that those people are going to be hurting for paychecks because they're going to get jobs. One of the actors I did see uh, seemed very, very supportive of it. Can you guess who it would be? It would be uh, Jeremy Strong. It was Jeremy Strong. Yes. Yeah. And he was basically like, it, it's not because I'm not going to have a great like sense of loss over this, but like it I doesn't think the distract. show's done. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I like I, from knowing what I know about Jeremy Strong, I would guess that he would be like, I'm glad that it didn't distract from the process. Oh yeah, that is sort of thing. I did rewatch the uh, the one he did, the the Big Short. You haven't seen the that? one he did. Yeah, you seen that one he did? I have not seen that one he did. No, I, a, I did miss. Uh, I I missed the Big Short. It's a Jeremy Strong vehicle. I was gonna say I missed the Big Short bus, but that would not have done well. It's a good thing you didn't say. <laughs> yeah, it that's right. It's uh, it's one that he did. That, but that, by the way, that, that was not meant to like. It was I was going to say it, and then I like realized. Right, it, yeah. saying like you missed the bus or you missed the yes. boat on this thing. I get, again. Okay, just making sure. It's a great thing that you didn't say it. <laughs> it's one that Jeremy Strong did, and I'll tell you what. First time seeing it since when it came out. That's an awesome movie, man. Do you have a shaved head in that one? Oh yeah. Yeah, I remember I, the only the only thing that I've seen from that movie is the uh, the boardroom clip. There's a lot the, of or like the conference room clip where uh, guys sitting in rooms. Yes, and uh, it, it's where they take the meeting with Gosling. Yeah, and Gosling explains using um, I want to say like the blocks, the little yeah. blocks, and he throws them in the yeah. trash. That's a great scene. He's doing Jenga actually. Yes, yeah, that's what yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says, "But this one's shit now." And yes, it really makes it's it's wild. It makes you understand all that, which for is for exactly like. Two hours and fifteen minutes, or whatever, and then as soon as it ends, if someone's like, "All right, was it about?" What is a savings bond? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> it is a like that's the reason I didn't see the movie. I was like, I'm not gonna be able to understand any of this shit. But it's, like the way that they explain it in that one scene that I've seen, does it I was following. I mean, a little bit. It's extremely, uh, it's extremely Adam McKay in that for stuff that's particularly confusing, they will say here's Margot Robbie in a bathtub to explain it to you. Yeah. Or here's Selena Gomez to explain it to you. And you get it. Yep. Yeah. Man, what a good movie. Uh, Ted Lasso? Yeah. First episode is the setup episode that you give it a pass and you say it wasn't it was very good. Extraordinarily meh. Like it wasn't bad. Yeah. It was just very Ted Lasso. And honestly, you could have just... Maybe skip that. You're like, okay, I knew that Nate was going to be being difficult. Yeah. That's kind of all that you get from that first episode. It, it had big uh, Ted Lasso is back energy to it. Where yeah. It was, yeah like, I, it was like celebrating its own return. Yeah. Which, hey, man, that's the deal we made with that show. 
We got all yeah. excited about the happy feels and the jumping up and down yeah. and the believe signs and everything. It was, it was like, like, we okay. love you for who you are. And then they well, came back and we were like, we're Ted Lasso. And, we were, and then I was like, yeah, all right, I know. Get on with it. I remember when Dam came out, a uh, friend of the podcast, Julian Bembo, made the point of like, this is Kendrick Lamar's, okay, you all said you like Kendrick Lamar. Now I'm going to fucking wrap my balls off. Like I made this cool jazz record and every, everybody from every walk of life was like, Kendrick, he's the goat. He's my favorite and everything. He's like, okay, now like I am going to rap so much in your face that you are going to have rap coming out of your, your nostrils right now. That's kind of what Ted Lasso can do now where it's like, you want the witty little jokey, funny, fun, fun, happy, happy. Okay, we're here. <laughs> uh, the second episode was tremendous, though. Yeah, it was very funny. Uh, sets up, uh, a, does a much better job of like driving the car somewhere. Yeah, and uh, you know, I don't necessarily like super love the uh, what's his name Zlatan. Yes, yeah, basically uh, Zlatan's introduction in the final season. Yeah, but. It is what it is. I did like the uh, the Keely uh, Roy yep. breakup introduction. Um, I, I like where things are going. Can I give a shout out to Keely? Looked and I not to be a, a couple of a dogs here, but uh, H- Hannah Waddingham gets her flowers every five seconds for this show because she should, and everybody on this show should. But. Keely looked tremendous in this episode. Yeah, I was a, like, wow, what a beautiful person. Yeah, of course. Uh, I am a Hamil, Hannah Waddingham. Every, yeah, yeah, everybody. We all I don't need stand. to say it, but yeah. <laughs> um, uh, the tall, my tall queen. Yes, I was, uh, I was pretty excited that I got that they were clearly going for a Zlatan thing. Right? That guy yeah, is... Yes, big, 100%. And yeah. he looked like him. Yeah, like they they like didn't go out of their way to be like this is not Zlatan. Yeah, uh, but I I love that there's still the Rupert and why can't I think of the boss's name? Uh, Hannah Waddingham. Oh uh, shoot! Why can't I? You got I? Keely, you got Roy, you got Beard, you got Ted, you got Nate the Great, you got Jamie Tart, Shit. and you got uh, Rebecca. Rebecca. Yes, Bang. Yeah. we got that at the same time. Nailed it. Ty goes to the runner. Batter up. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, like, I, I like, I, I like that. I, I don't know. I like totals. <laughs> I don't know how much I like them, like, really steering into Rupert's evil. Like, they gave him, like, an evil lair in his new stadium. Oh, yeah. Like, I, no, I kind of like that. Do you? <laughs> it's like, got he some, only like, wears black now. It's got some, like, cartoon Batman Yes, vibes. 100%. <laughs> like, it's got some the Batman Rupert vibes. was always, like, a bad, like, the bad, like, the bad villain and, like, clearly a bad dude yeah. that you're not supposed to like. But they made him, like, come off as, like, a... A regular-ish guy who was, like, a billionaire. No, now he's got, like, the coat and everything. Yeah, right. They, and, they, and he, they've, like, recast They him. light him in, like, we, like menacing ways. Arthur Blank plays him <laughs> yeah, now. right. It's a whole thing. Which, one of the funniest things in sports is Arthur Blank looking like a cartoon Batman villain, but being, like, one of the nicest owners in all of sports. Yes. I mean, he doesn't do himself any favors with the how he dresses. pinstripe suits. The pinstripe yeah. suits and the long coats... You just can't do like super long And like long the pencil coats. mustache. <laughs> yeah, he just really seems like he's got something up his sleeve. But I'm this last episode of Lasso got me excited about Lasso yeah, again, which is I good. love the Roy Kent and uh Jamie Tart relationship now mm-hmm. where like they get along but they're still like they're still like prickly towards each other. Yeah. But like they they both care about each other, which I I, I very much appreciate where it's like they're like uncomfortable with how much they care about each other. <laughs> how do you feel about uh, the Trent Krim storyline? Uh, I'm I'm definitely down with more Trent Krim. Yeah, I I mean that hair. My hey, what a guy! Yeah, I mean, if if, if the, I was saying that Keely looks great in this episode, if there is just a a visual vibe, I would love to achieve. It is that of Trent like, Krim. The hair is just immaculate. It's got like the the wave. It's got the gray streaks. It's mm. got just perfect volume. As I said, 
I'm I'm glad that I'm excited about Lasso again because it, if if it were going downhill, then I, I I need more than just Succession going right now. Yeah, and like it's also a uh, it does a really good job of balancing like the cartoony elements of it, like the Rupert mm-hmm. fucking Batman lair. Um, oh, I didn't like the shrieks from uh, Beard. Get that shit out of here. Yeah, that was a little much. Didn't um, like it. Yeah, I like how it balances like actual human elements and like over the top cartoonishness. I I like the soccer as well. Yeah, it's okay. I can take it or leave it. 